So we're here at the Arm Tech Con. So who are you? Uh, my name's Eric Klein. I'm a partner at Lemnos Labs. We are an early stage hardware venture fund. So uh, what have you been doing at Lemnos Labs? What's the history of the company? So we've been around for about four years. We were actually one of the very first hardware incubators. And what that means is we work with the earliest stage hardware entrepreneurs. So two or four founders with a crazy duct tape prototype built on Arduino or on a low, uh, like for instance, a low power arm sock doing something amazing. And we help them grow from that first prototype all the way through to wherever they're going to go in business and serving consumers or enterprise or industrial. So in the last four years, do you have some success stories or some secrets or what, 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 have, you, what have you launched? What so have you been able to do? We've had the pleasure of working with some great companies like Airware, which is the brains for uh, most commercial drones. Uh, we worked with a, a little company called Spire, which is doing low earth orbit satellites to c capture global proprietary data flows. Uh, we've had another great company called Six Sensor Labs, which is doing a, a, a protein-based gluten detector to help people with, uh, with different uh, issues around gluten. Um, we did a great company that was just announced called Teforia, which is building a tea infuser. So we've done everything from crazy robots to low Earth orbit satellites to um, you know, sort of consumer medical type devices, all different things. Teforia, like tea yes. infuser, like the... Uh putting the right amount of tea in the yes. hot water and then make it its perfect taste or something? Absolutely perfect cup of tea. Tea is the second most, most consumed beverage in the world. But the funny thing is, and it has this beautiful art and science around it, but if you go today and you want a good cup of tea, for instance, in the United States, you're going to get a cup of Lipton's tea and a little bit of hot water. It's kind of like dirt, no? Uh, not so good. It's but so imagine good. if you could control every part of the process with a beautiful machine that honors the science and the ritual of tea, but really really built and literally makes the best cup of tea you've ever Chinese had in your tea? life. Any kind of tea, actually. Everything from a, from a oolong to a black to a green. Poor. Uh, all different oh, kinds. Yeah. So, so does it work? It works. It's in fact, launched? it it, uh, it was just announced last week, and uh, people uh, all over the world have already had the opportunity to taste the tea, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, it's amazing!" The Wall Street Journal, the some of the most important people in the tea industry have all said it's a game changer. So here, the Arm TechCon, Arm is awesome, right? Yes, There's indeed. There's a lot of stuff happening around Arm, and the IoT <laughs> yeah. is a big hype, kind of, yes. right? And uh, is it gonna be huge? And how is it gonna be huge? And what do you think is exciting about IoT? Well, I mean, I, I, again, our, I mean, I think ARM in many ways is synonymous with, with what's happening with IoT. And, and as I said in, in a speech I just gave, we're literally just beginning the voyage. Think of Mount Everest, and we're just at the first base camp. There are so many opportunities for devices, hundreds of thousands, millions, and at, at some point, billions of devices to just change the way we do business, to change the way we live our lives, and to change the way companies are able to make products. And so, really, we're at that phase where we're still learning learning how to do this, there's a lot of opportunities. If you're an IoT developer right now, you know that while there's a lot of opportunities, there's still a lot of challenges in doing it well. But I think that's why we're all here, is to learn best practices and to move forward. So you don't want just a step counter. You want more than that, right? Yeah, you I mean, want, I, I, I made an interesting comment. The world has enough step counters today. So if you're an IoT entrepreneur out there, you have to think, why am I carrying a step counter? Why do I have this thing attached to my wrist? It's because you want to change your behavior. Behavioral modification is going to be one of the great changes that we make. We move from saying, you've walked 6,000 steps today, to saying, here's that, what you can do with that information to make yourself stronger, healthier, you know, extend your life, whatever it is that you want to do. So we're going to stop, we're going to move from just capturing information, which I think is the first phase of IoT, moving into affecting change. And that's, that is where we're going to unlock the value of the Internet of Things. And what's the science behind that? So who's, who are the experts who can figure it out? Yeah, so the funny thing is, is if you ask that today, I always say for the, for the next big startups that I want to fund, I want teams that have clinical psychologists on staff. And what clinical that, psychologists. Clinical psychologists. These are people who train their whole lives to get you to change your behavior. They're like coaches in essence, but with great science degrees. You add them in with all the knowledge and expertise that comes from the IoT devices and they will help you grow and again, do you want to lose weight? Do you want to get stronger? Do you want to be better at the sport that you're involved in? Do you want to 
uh, combat a disease that you might you know have and, and live a great life. These are all things that are possible, but it's different than just saying here's 6,000 steps or here's the sh you know sugar content in your blood. It's really to say what can you do with it. So we're going to move again past instrumentation to affecting change, and it's going to be awesome. And it should not just be a game, right? So you're talking about right. step counter with built-in psychotherapy? Yeah, I mean what we're talking about is again knowing what makes you as an individual and you're unique. What motivates you to make change? Changes. And at the same time, think about it with enterprises. What motivates them to make big changes? So we have to think about going again from just getting raw data to making a change in the universe, whether that's efficiency on a factory floor line or making you the best triathlete you can be, or quite honestly, just getting your butt off the couch. <laughs> so this is ArmTech on here, there's Intel over there, there's Google and Apple. This is Silicon Valley. Is this where you're based? Or yeah, we're, we're actually there... based in San Francisco. I've lived here for 25 years, yeah. But how about innovation coming from China or some other place? Do you work with, with people outside Silicon Valley? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, just to be clear, Silicon Valley is amazing, but it is just one of the centers across Across the globe for innovation. If you look at the amazing things happening in Israel, in China, in Europe, in Southeast Asia, across, IoT is truly a global phenomenon. And in fact, it has to be tuned. Solutions that we make that might sell well in the United States won't do as well without you understanding global audiences. So yes, Silicon Valley super cool, but this is way bigger than the valley.